if you're going to talk about a revolutionary situation, you have to have people who are physically able to wage revolution, who are physically able to organize and physically able to do all that is done. Yeah, but the question is, more: how do you get there? Do you get there by confrontation, violence? Oh, is that the question you were asking? Yeah. See, that's, I mean, that's another thing. When you talk about a revolution, most people think violence um, without realizing that the real content of any kind of revolutionary thrust lies in the, in, in the principles and the goals that you're striving for, not in the way you reach them. On the other hand, uh, because of the way this society is organized, because of the violence that exists on the surface everywhere, you have to expect that there are going to be such explosions. You have to expect things like that as reactions. If you are a black person and live in, 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 in the black community all your life and walk out on the street every day seeing white policemen surrounding you, I, when I was living in Los Angeles, for instance, long before the situation in L.A. ever occurred, uh, I was constantly stopped. No, the, the, the police didn't know who I, who I was, but I was a black woman. I had a, had a natural, and, and they, I suppose, thought that I might be a, quote, militant. And when you live under a situation like that constantly, um, uh, and, and, then, and then you ask me, you know, whether I approve of violence. I mean, that just doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, whether I approve of guns. I grew up in Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, some very, very good friends of mine were killed by bombs, bombs that were planted by racists. Uh, I remember from, from the time I was very small, I remember the sounds of bombs exploding across the street, our house shaking. I remember my father having to have guns at his disposal at all times because of the fact that at any moment uh, uh, someone we, we might expect to be attacked. The man who was at that time in con complete control of the city government, his name was Bull Connor, uh, would often get on the radio and make statements like uh, 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 niggas have moved into a white neighborhood, uh, we better expect some bloodshed tonight. And sure enough, there would be bloodshed. Uh, after the four young girls who were, who lived very, who lived, one of them lived uh, next door to me. Um, I was very good friends with the sister of, of another one. My, my sister was very good friends with all three of them. My mother taught one of them in her class. My mother, in fact, when the bombing occurred, one of the mothers of uh, one of the young girls called my mother and said, uh, can you take me down to the church to pick up uh, Carol? I, you know, we heard about the bombing and I, and I don't have my car. And they went down and what did they find? They found limbs and heads strewn all over the place. And then after that, uh, in my neighborhood, all of the men organized themselves into an armed patrol. They had to take their guns and patrol our community every night because they did not want that to happen again. I mean, that's why when someone asked me about violence, uh, uh, I just uh, I just find it incredible it, because it, what it means is that the person who's asking that question has absolutely no idea what black people have gone through, what black people have experienced in this country since the time the first black person was kidnapped from the shores of Africa. Mm -hmm.